Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's been a little over a week since release day. Still got collector booster boxes to open. Still got Lost Legends cards to find. So let's see what we can do. Let's go ahead and slice this thing open and see if we can break even or potentially make a few dollars. And if nothing else, maybe we can finally get a box topper that is worth more than 10 cents. All right, so we've got our 12 packs here. Uh, disclosure, this is from the same case as yesterday's box. So seeing as we didn't see a Lost Legends yesterday, uh, I guess our odds have increased. Yep. Don't need to say a word. All right, first pack. Dominary United Collector Booster Pack. Just kidding, it won't open. <laughs> All right, here we go. So we're starting things off with an Essence Scatter, uh, Writhing Necromass, Keldon Strike Team, Heroic Charge, Raph Weatherlight Stalwart, Tail Swipe, and an Island. All right, so no Legends card. Our textured foil is gonna be King Darien. Defiler of Instinct is up next, followed by the Reaver Cleaver from the Commander set. Followed by Hand of Hatred. And Jasmine again. And Jahora, Ageless Innovator. And then Rith, Liberated Primeval Mythic. Followed by Radadrabek of Urborg here. And then a Saperling Goblin in the back. I'm going to try and do a live Mythic count here. Let me just see if we had gotten any others. I didn't think we did. So that was a single Mythic pack. So we're going to start things off with a Phyrexian Rager, Tribute to Urborg, Yavamaya Sojourner, Tidepool Turtle, a Pilferer, a Cleaving Skyrider, followed by our Full Art Swamp. Then we're going to see um, the Aeronaut coming in as our Textured Foil, followed by the Elder Dragon. Defiler of Vigor, the good Defiler in the set. Very nice to see that. And then Steward of Tides. Followed by Torwaki the Younger in uh, Etched Foil. And then Torsen, Founder of Benalia. Technically a Mythic. And Torsen, Founder of Benalia again. Uh, this time in regular frame. With a, an activated Sleeper coming in rare in the back. Extended Art fo Foil with a Knight Token. So I noticed the uh, the very first pack, no extended art. Everything was showcase. So good to see we got uh, two in that pack. All right, Radiant Grove, Sunlit Marsh, Bog Badger, Furious Bellow, Night of Dawn's Light, the Weather Seed Treaty, and a Plains. And then we get activated, whoop, <laughs> I just saw that. Activated Recruiter coming in textured with an Ivy Gleeful Spell Thief, followed by Heir of Roga, Shieldred's Faithful, Ramirez de Petrio, Rasputin, and there we go. Is, is that what I think it is? Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Double Liliana pack. How amazing is that? One foil, one non-foil. There's a soldier in the back. Two Liliana's back to back. <laughs> I'm just going to take a moment here and go ahead and put these in some sleeves. That is, uh, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit speechless there. Uh, that's that's way better than uh, than a five dollar uh, Legends card. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, let's just keep going here. So I've had really good luck with Leyline Binding, Sarah Paragons, and Liliana's in the boxes I've opened. So, very happy to see that. Idyllic Beachfront, The Prophecy, Battle Mage Captain, Dragon Whelp. Then we got ourselves the island. 
and we're gonna get Danitha Benalia's Hope, right? The uh, the only white uh, card from the Textured Foil series. Then we have Defiler of Faith, and then Drag to the Bottom and Extended Art, followed by Argivian Recruiter, General Marholt Elves Dragon. And Savitri, the Dragon Master, technically a mythic. Then Sulfuria Springs, followed by a Lanawar Green Widow in foil. And then a bird token in the back. I still can't believe that. Two Lilianas in a single pack, back to back. I don't know what the odds of that are, but, uh, you know, usually you'll get two of <laughs> a not so great card back to back. So we've got a lookout. Faith Bonder, Apparition, Vine Shaper Prodigy, Benalia's Ruin, Protect the Negotiators, followed by a Mountain. Then we're going to see Urg Spawn of Turg coming in here and textured. Just a fun card to say. Then the uh, beautiful Yavamaya Coast. And Mana Cannons coming in from the Commander set. There's Urg again in his less spectacular form, regular foil. Then the, the General in Textured, and Aisha Tanka Armor in Textured, with Lady uh, Lady of Otaria coming in, technically a Mythic, but also from Commander. And then there we go, there's a really good Mythic here. The Extended Art uh, Shivan De Devastator coming in in Foil, with a Soldier and an Ornithopter. Hope that wasn't the one with the Legends card in it. All right, we got the Vine Wall, Smash to Dust, Branch Rider, Bone uh, Splinters, Incredible Tablet, Terra Sunder, and a Swamp. Then we're going to see the Battle Mage Captain coming in here in Textured with Shauna Purifying Blade, Mythic Hit, uh, Rada's uh, Firebrand, and then Afara with Tobias. Saw lots of him yesterday. And then Braid's Arisen Nightmare. Very nice to see that card. And then Shauna Purifying Blade again. And then Academy Lore Master in uh, Borderless Foil with a treasure in the back. All right, six packs to go. That's half the box. Two Lilianas are definitely the, uh, the key standout so far. So if you'd picked up that pack for $25, you would be extremely happy. All right, Gaius Might, the Blast, the Axe, the Tributary, the Warren Chief, the Sprouting Goblin. Then we got ourselves a Mountain, followed by Bearer of Blades, Plaza of Heroes, one of the best lands in the set, Leaf Crown Visionary, Benalia's Ruin, the General again, Ohabi Kalaria coming in with the Raven Man following behind, and then an Archangel of Wrath borderless foil and then a bird so be sure to stay tuned at the end we'll do another mtg box analysis uh, i think starting next week i'm going to start kind of stacking some of these boxes up against each other um, prices should be a little bit more stable by then so we can kind of get an idea of where we are so we've got a phalanx a cavalier a picker an autumn uh Auto, uh, automatic Librarian. Why can't I say that? Uh, the Recruiter, Heroes Heirloom, and a Forest. Then we get ourselves a Storm Runner, Showcase uh, Textured Foil, Leaf Crown Visionary, followed by Plaza of Heroes again. Very nice. Uh, Sky Knight, Jasmine again, third appearance. Roga uh, Overlord, Danitha Benalia Hope. And we get a Rith Liberated Primeval, another mythic coming in here. So we've got quite the mythic box so far. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus our two Liliana. So we're at 10. And we still have four packs to go. Hopefully I didn't just jinx us out of <laughs> mythics. So far, this feels like one of the better boxes. So we got the Tide Turner, the Shield Wall, the Crusher. Thrill of Possibility, Prayer of Binding, Resolute Reinforcements, then our planes, and then Blood Fist of Keld, 
Seeing a lot of uncommons in the texture of this box. Then we get ourselves a really good hit here, foil ley line binding. And then a Vesuvian Duplomancy coming in in extended art. Very nice mythic, number 11. And then we got the Fury Rider. There's Tobias again. And there's the Dragon Master. Another mythic, then the Keep Overlord. And the Temporal Firestorm. I thought that was actually going to be Jaya, not just a card featuring Jaya. All right, we got ourselves a bite down. Got the gardener, the barricade, the meteorite, the scorn, the sadistic pilgrim, and a swamp. Followed by Kenarud Sky Knight, uh, another uncommon and textured. Carplusion Forest. Followed by the new Lagoif, the Warren Chief, the General again, Ribaz of the Claw, Gleeful Spell Thief. And a chaotic transformation to end us off. So those last two packs are definitely not great packs. So no Shieldred uh, in a while for my collector boxes. Would like to get a few more of her. Oh, look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We got ourselves... A Fallen Angel coming in here. Now, it's an uncommon from Legends. It's not the greatest uh, or the highest value, but currently the TCG market value is right around $13.50. So that is a phenomenal card to see. It looks to be in pretty good condition. I don't see any issues with it. Uh, it's pretty well centered, too. There's a little, little ding down here in this corner. But uh, overall, uh, in very good shape. Wow. All right. So it's not a 30 cent card. That's good. Very cool to see that. Then we got Frightful Return. Battle uh, Battle Him. Got a Forest. The Raven Man coming in and textured. The Weatherlight completed. Mythic. Followed by a Horde Master. Uh, Aeronaut. <laughs> to, to buy us again uh the gold sting coming in and textured or an etched uh a scholar of antiquity and then a leaf crown visionary followed by a phyrexian in the back so we're just going to take a half a second here sleeve this up and really give it a, a good look over you can kind of tell the off centering left to right here uh as well as up and down so quality control back in the day, certainly uh, not that great. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that in on the hard case. Uh, Liliana is currently valued more, uh, but that's okay. Um, I did freak out a little bit when I was looking at my price list. So this is a uh, Fallen Angel, right? Directly below it is Falling Star. And the Falling Star currently has a value of $167. So um, for half a second, I uh, freaked out. But that's okay. I'm very happy to see any lost legend and just be kind of part of the history of the chase. All right, so we got a sleeper, Steel Crusher, Abomination, Urborg, Joda, Founding of the Third Path, Mountain, Shieldritz Faithful, King Darien, the Briar Hydra, the Jumpstart Rare, then Bone Rattle, Ramirez, the Ever changing Dane. I don't think I've seen this one before from Commander. And then a Shivan Reef. And then Heir of Rogoth with a Soldier in the back. All right, so that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen mythics and a Lost Legend. All right, so stay tuned. I'll get everything sorted, organized, and be right back with the MTG box analysis. Let's start the MTG box analysis with a look at the Dominaria United set and establish what was possible to see in this collector booster box. It's a little confusing, so just bear with me as I walk you through it. The Dominaria United set contains a total of 427 numbered cards. From my perspective, the cards are either traditional foil or they're not. In the table, the column on the left shows the non-foil card count and the column on the right shows the traditional foil card count. 
Despite seeing a lot of etched foils during the opening, the main Dominaria United set does not contain any etched foils. Instead, the set replaced these with 41 textured foil stained glass cards. In the non-foil space, we can only see Showcase, Phyrexian, Borderless, Extended Art, and those textured foils, which means that we can only see 141 of the 427 non-foil cards in the set. In traditional foil, we can see all the cards from the main set except for the regular framed basic lands. We can also see the full art stained glass lands, all the showcase cards, the three Phyrexians, the 11 Borderless, and the 45 Extended Arts, which means that we can see 366 of the 386 cards available in foil. Collector booster packs of Dominaria United contain more Commander cards than any previous set. So let's take a look at this subset's distribution. The Commander set contains a total of 240 cards. In the Collector Booster Packs, we can see 28% of these, including 20 regular frame multicolor cards, 20 foil etched, and 26 extended art cards. Now let's take a look at how this box was distributed for the main Dominaria United set. This chart shows the non-foils we saw in green, the foils we saw in orange, and the set in gray as our baseline. Based on the data, we can see that this box contained 9 non-foil showcase cards, three borderless, 12 textured foil, and nine extended art. In the foil space, we saw between 10 and 13 cards from each of the five primary colors of magic, as well as one borderless and seven foil extended art cards. Now let's do the same for the Dominaria United Commander subset. In this box, we saw three foils. We saw our multicolored box topper, as well as two extended art cards in foil. We also saw 13 non-foil multicolored cards, 11 etched foils, and three extended art cards. Pivoting back to the main set, this box contained 33 unique non-foil cards, which accounts for 23% of the 141 cards we were eligible to see. In the foil space, we saw 117 unique cards, giving us 32% coverage of the 366 cards we were eligible to see. Our highest coverage from the five primary colors was white, with 34% of the set making an appearance. This box contained 23 non-foil cards from the Dominary United Commander set. This accounts for about 35% of the 66 cards we were eligible to see. In the foil space, our coverage numbers were much lower as we only saw three foils, including our box topper. This gave us 7% coverage of the 46 cards we were eligible to see. Pivoting to coverage by rarity, from the main Dominaria United set, we saw eight uncommons in non-foil giving us 20% coverage. We saw 21 rares for 28% coverage and four mythics for 15% coverage. In the foil space, we covered 47% of the commons, 36% of the uncommons, 17 rares for 14% coverage, and 5 mythics giving us 13% coverage. Continuing with coverage by rarity, from the commander subset, we saw 9 of the 10 uncommons, 9 of the 42 rares, and 5 of the 14 mythics in non-foil. In the foil space, we saw 1 uncommon and 2 rares, no mythics. In total, this box contained 50 rares and 14 mythics, which is a new high for a collector booster box for me. This box contained 181 cards if you include the box topper and the Lost Legend. The only duplicates from the main set were the full art stained glass lands, and this should be expected because there's only 5 different lands and each box contains 12 packs containing one land each. Therefore, 7 of the 150 Dominary United cards were repeats for a duplication rate of 5%. In the commander space, we saw 30 total cards. Of these, four were repeated, which means that our duplication rate for commander was 13%. Now let's take a look at the value of the cards from the two sets. Currently, there are 23 cards valued over $10, 18 cards valued between $5 and $10, and 81 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 351 cards are valued less than a dollar. On the Dominary United side, the 407 cards that we can see in a collector booster box are valued at $837.18. This is actually up since Friday's box opening, $2.18. We may be seeing the start of price stabilization for this set. And on the Commander side, the 66 cards that we're eligible to see have a combined value of $112.42. This is a reduction of $3.15 since Friday's box opening. I'm still very bearish on the Commander cards and feel that as more collector boxes are opened, the prices will continue to fall. Now let's take a look at the value that we saw in this box, starting off in the non-foil space. We saw four big hits during the opening, including the Extended Art Plaza of Heroes, valued at $10.02, 
The extended art Vesuvian Duplomancy valued at $12.54, and the borderless Liliana of the Veil vale, valued at $36.44. And from the Commander set, we also saw the Extended Art Reaver Cleaver at $14.94. This box also contained two cards valued between $5 and $10, as well as 13 cards valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 41 non-foil cards were all valued less than a buck. And here's a recap of the value that we saw in the foil space. We saw three big hits valued over $10, including the Leyline Binding from the main set, currently valued at $11.33. We also saw the extended art Shiv and Devastator, currently valued at $15.40. And finally, we saw that foil Liliana of the Veil, vale, valued at $55.42. The box also contained four cards valued between $5 and $10, as well as 23 foils valued between $1 and $5. The remaining 90 foils in the box, however, were valued less than a dollar. So how did this box perform? Well, I purchased this box during pre-order season from Card Kingdom for $264.99, not including tax. Today, we opened up 12 packs with 15 cards each, seeing a total of 180 cards plus our box stopper. The 12 tokens have a combined value of $11.33. In the Commander set, we saw $31.59 in value from the 28 non-foil cards. And we saw $3.51 from the three foils. From the Dominaria United main set, the 33 non-foils have a combined value of $103.34. And the 117 foils from the Dominaria United set have a total value of $165.27. And finally, our Lost Legend, The Fallen Angel, is currently valued at $13.83. This brings the grand total up to $328.87, which is a gain of $63.88 over the price I paid, which equates to 124% of the box price being returned in card value. For those interested in cards just valued over $2, the numbers look like this. In total, we saw 23 out of 181 cards valued over two bucks with a combined value of $244.35, which means that 74% of the box value came from those 23 cards. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this Dominaria United Collector Booster Box opening. I sure did. Until next time, do something amazing.